in film, so much is happening that you can get distracted, but uh, the, the, the rigor it deserves, you know, the, the, the fortune of having all the people connected at the same time to do the exact same thing, you know, it's so valuable. You cannot waste that. Like people talk too much about what happened when we stopped, you know, shooting on film and went to digital and we started like shooting and shooting nonstop. And, but, but the real waste is not, it's not the film, you know, it's, it's that energy. Ladies and gentlemen, Diego Luna. Thank you. So nice to be here. What a cool room. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. I, I was hoping they would cheer for it tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's. it's uh, I felt like I was like. Joy, please, yeah, please, going please, through please. an exam. Like, oh, let's hope they like the ones I like. <laughs> um, I, mean, I mean, first of all, let's let's, let's start here. Uh, I called this meeting today with you <laughs> to discuss a few things. Uh, you have been around now 20 some odd years. Uh, oh, you can say it. You can say it. Because <laughs> you're not aging, man. You're just like staying the same. And it's, uh, I would like that, to know your secret later. But can you talk about, <laughs> and I always think this is a good place to start. You're born in, in Mexico. You fell in love with film, uh, television. You fell in love with art. Do you remember what it was that you watched that you were like, I want to do that? That's what I do for a living. Yeah, definitely. I do remember. It's not, a, it's not as romantic as, as you probably want it to be. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I grew up in a... My, my father is a set designer. It's a theater designer, and uh, he, he designs the, yeah, the sets and the, and the lighting. And... Uh, I grew up watching him working and, uh, you know, living in the theater and he, he did a lot of opera too. So it was fascinating, you know, and I was, I remember I was six years old and I, I, I really enjoyed like half of my life, you know, basically school was just a tramit in order to get to the theater and be with my dad and spend all the afternoon there. My mom died when I was really young. So, uh, on a way for me, theater was, way to keep my father close to me, you know? And I started working at six years old. I was asked one day if I wanted to join a theater play. I asked my dad in front of so many people that he couldn't say no. That's the way you do it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Take notes, actors, it's the way you do it, it's how you get in there. <laughs> my daughter is here, so... Yeah. I, <laughs> it's she, obviously is not gonna be the same with you wherever you are. <laughs> But because Talking that wasn't Lucas healthy. Right now, somewhere. <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's just that we it was a very unique and specific family. You know, my my father was a father and mother, and uh, and theater became the home I was needing. You know, I, I always say that theater and cinema uh, are are kind of like the dream for orphans. You know, suddenly you are part of a family. They all want to tell the same story. Can you imagine going to like Christmas and sitting down at a table and there's no people arguing. Everyone wants to talk about the same thing, you know? Everyone wants to tell the same story. Everyone is willing to participate. Everyone is passionate and, and happy to be there. And, uh, and, and it's all about confidence. It's all about, you know, trusting each other, which is what family is about, you know? Who, who are you gonna trust first is your family. So anyway, that's why I started acting. And, uh, and, I, and I, a lot of my reference, my early reference, are actors that never got to experience film, you know? But these times in Mexico, we were doing very little work in, in, in the film industry. We were shooting 10 movies a year, so uh, there was a lack of opportunity, a dramatic one, that has been changing. Uh, now, now it's a different scenario. Well, uh, you bring up, bring up a good point that I note often, and anyone can be a, a good slash great actor, but the most memorable, most amazing actors, the bones are made on a theater stage. And you have such a unique relationship to theater. What are some of your earliest memories of uh, you know, getting on that stage for the first time and how you made, you know, mm -hmm. made strengthen that muscle. I think th th there is something about theater that can't compare to anything else. It's you're in control. Uh, 
you know, you're given every tool, every tool you, you, you can uh, or they can give you. Uh, directors can feed you with all the information. Well, but the moment when the show starts, it's all about you and the audience. And, uh, and to me, that is very important because the way an actor that has been in theater respects audience is very special. And, and sometimes cinema alienates you from that. You know, you don't get to experience that. You, you shoot a film, you, I don't know, you're in a tiny town in Japan and you shoot a film that suddenly becomes a major hit in the States. You, you don't even, you know, it's like rock bands <laughs> long ago before internet, you know. You don't know what's happening with what you do. But in theater, it happens to you and the audience and it transforms you at the same time, you know. It hits you at the same time and it leaves a mark and it's very special and it doesn't matter what happens there, it's worth it, you know. Yeah. If it's good or bad, the experience matters and, and, and uh, it's worth living it. Uh, I don't know, it's, uh, I think it's about that. I, I also think there is a, a, a responsibility uh, that you understand when, when you're on stage, you know, uh, that you many times don't understand in, in film. Yeah. In film, you, you live in a bubble, you know, where you, you're trying not to get affected by what's around you and concentrating what you're there to do. In theater, you have to worry about what's around you, you know? You have to be aware of, those, of both things and you have to be able to encapsulate and be aware of what's around you. And I think that that is, uh, yeah, that is great training. And, uh, and it's good for life, not just for <laughs> acting, you know? Yeah. It's good for life to be aware of others, you know? And, uh, and, and, and let yourself get affected by what's happening to other people, which is what acting is yeah. all about, no? Well, awesome. Thank you so much for that. Um, I, I can imagine breaking into this industry had its challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a Latino, mm -hmm. very proud uh, Latino. Uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry for anyone else who's not. It's just it's, it's kind of our thing. You know, it, we're, we're just, you're fine. We're, I mean, we're, we're, we're really good at it. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, but uh, it feels good. No, I know it feels, it feels yeah. amazing. It's mm. like the best thing I, I love about myself. Um, as a Latino, Spanish-speaking person, what were some of those barriers you experienced in Hollywood, especially? Um, that future generations, we can hope that they will avoid uh, when they s go into this industry and they look at a Diego Luna and say, oh, I could do that. I think that one, you just said it, uh, there was no reference for us, mm. you know? There was not like, there was not many that you could say, oh, I wish I could have that, you know, that career, I wish I had that opportunity. I, uh, you know, I, I grew up wanting to be people that didn't look like me, mm -hmm. uh, uh, wanting to perform roles that had nothing to do with my context. And, uh, and I saw my context uh, portray in a, in a very condescendent way for, for quite a long time, you know, as if I just had one or two opportunities, you know, as if we uh, were kind of like the same well, the whole idea, even, even I mean, I understand why, where the, the term Latino comes from, but that's something I learned when I came to the States. Mm -hmm. You know, oh shit, I, I am a Latino. Ah. Because <laughs> before I was just Diego, and yeah. I, was, uh, I happened to be Mexican because I lived in Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, you know. La, uh, but then I went like, oh, so this is to talk about us because we're different. As, like, but we're different like between ourselves, you know, it's not the same to be born in Mexico than Argentina than yeah. Honduras, you know, it has nothing to do. Uh, in fact, the experiences are very different. And, uh, and, and we were not celebrated for the right reasons, you know. I think uh, if you think about Latin America, it is the biggest territory where people speak the same language. Mm -hmm. You can cross 23, 22 or 23 borders and people are still talking the same language. Mm. That doesn't happen anywhere in the world, you know? And, uh, and then I started understanding. It's like, wow, I am part of that richness. I am part of that uh, diversity that can be just like wonderful to, to watch and to witness as audience, you know? Uh, but films don't happen to, to reflect on that. They don't happen to have time to, to see that, you know? And that's why theater was so important for me, because in theater I was uh, capable to see 
people that look like me, like talk like me on stage, doing great stories and, uh, and getting me inspired. But then things started changing and it was, it was quite fascinating to see, uh, you know, and I think it's because audiences started changing. I think at the end, the industry reacts to the audience, you know? I think we as a, this is something I learned from when I was doing the, the film of uh, Cesar Chavez. And that one, I, I was just directing and not acting. Uh, but on the research, I realized how, what he understood, you know? It's like, let's talk to the consumer. Let's talk to the consumer and things will change, you know? If you, if you go to the people making money already, in the, uh, in the structure as it is, they'll never understand. Yeah. But if that money is not <laughs> getting there, they'll react, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, I, I, and I apply that to, to what we do. You know, when we buy a ticket, we're sending a message to this industry. Yeah. When we don't buy a ticket, we're also sending a message, you know? Therefore, it's, it's in our hands, you know? And it's happening, it's naturally happening. Audiences are going like, hey, I wanna see stories that are about me. I want to see stories that challenge me as audience, that think I'm intelligent, that, uh, that uh, just are not hoping to repeat over and over the same joke, mm -hmm. you know? It's like, I want to be challenged. And, and audiences are saying, hey, here I am. And uh, you better get better, you know, at what you do. Mm -hmm. And the, I think the industry is reacting to that. And I think today, opportunities are there uh, in a way they were not before. And things are changing slowly. But they're changing, you know. For me, uh, what happened in Rogue One was was a great example, you know, of of how things are different to the world I grew up watching. You know, uh, I was called to meet with a director that was gonna do a very special and gigantic and secret project, and uh, I I get into a, a, a restaurant in in Beverly Hills at 5 p.m. and it's empty and I go like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just changing the tables. Wait, can you just share really quick what you, what you thought it was before it actually? No, no, I, I I had a I had a, a sense that it could be something called Star Wars, but uh, okay. <laughs> but no one said it like openly. This is for this film or this. They said like it's these people, it's this company. <laughs> We'll see what that is. Uh, just <laughs> go there alone, you know? <laughs> and you're gonna, he, he they're gonna beat me up when they go inside. Go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was scared. <laughs> and they were changing the tables, and I was like, wow. And there's a guy sitting in the back, really young guy, uh, and uh, with a computer giving his back to the wall uh, with the computer open and I come in and he says, hey, this is my name, we hug, well, and he starts talking about a project and, uh, and he says, well, there is this project and then I'm just going to tell you the story, if you can sit down and he starts showing me some designs and, and uh, the universe he was hoping to, to portray and I go like, wow, that looks like Star Wars, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the guy was... And the guy was talking about this man, so then this man comes in and does this, and then this man does this, and then the man goes da na na, and then he realizes this, and then, and I go like, I mean, <laughs> stop talking about that guy. What do you want me to do? <laughs> you know, clearly I won't be that guy. I mean, like. he's also like, you're about to get me sued for like copyright infringement. You don't exactly. even know that it's Star Wars. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I, I love making the joke, like, I was like, okay, I'll give you Gail's number, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but it, it was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was weird uh, that he got to the end and said, like, and, and I, I, I would love you to play this role. And I was like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, really, it just, it, it didn't make sense to me. And then he said the most important part. Uh, because I did ask, why me? I mean, why? Mm -hmm. I'm clearly not that person you just <laughs> described, you know? <laughs> uh, and, uh, and he goes like, well, I saw you in Itu Mama Tambien, and since then I want to work with you, and I think the tone of that film uh, is, is something I would love to bring to this film. And I, I had to think about it because, you know, I never realized that doing a movie like Itu Mama Tambien would get you any close to do Star Wars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? 
And oh, you guys can see the Millennium Falcon <laughs> in the, yes. at the end. It's, it's a post credit scene. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta really catch it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. <laughs> I would have get naked long before. No, no. No, uh, no but it's, it's, it's true. It's like I grew up in a world where they said, like, the cinema you like watching, the tone of acting you care about, the stories that matter to you have no connection to those huge popular uh, projects, you know, that, that, that you also like. There's no connection between those two worlds. And suddenly there I was with a man saying, no, there is. There is. From now on, there is. And I, I always, like, talk about Lucas Films. As, as, as a company that, that took a risk way before others, you know, uh, because they saw that, that the future was that, you know, that if they wanted to keep doing stuff, they wanted to keep connecting with new audiences, they, they, had, to, they had to transform. And, uh, and suddenly this little beautiful film that we did as a family in Mexico that for us felt so specific at the time, suddenly gave me a great opportunity, you know? And, uh, and this is, I'm going back to your question, don't, <laughs> don't worry, because I am listening. But uh, <laughs> I don't think no one ever would have said, you know, if, if one day you want to do a film like Rogue One, you should start paying attention to what's happening just in front of you, you know, just with your community. Be specific, be local, think local, and, uh, and, and be, yeah, think, think about the, the specificity as, as, as a jewel, as something uh, that makes your project different to any other, therefore as universal as possible, you know. And uh, I was going to go back to your question because the, the two years I lived in L.A., uh, it's the only years I didn't work in the States. You know? uh, everyone's moving right now. <laughs> everyone's like, no, but everyone, uh, everyone has their own story. But I, I am. I, I grew up in Mexico. I was doing theater in Mexico. I then started doing TV and then film, and I was doing a lot of stuff. And every time there was an opportunity for me here, I found a way to be here. You know, uh, or the opportunity find a way to make me aware of it. Um, but I never stopped. And it's. It, if something asks you to renounce who you are, it's wrong. Don't do it, you know? That's my, 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 my feeling. And today the industry is, is, is different. It's different and audiences are, are, are uh, audiences today have a power they, they didn't have before. Yeah, I agree. Well said. Feel free to clap, clap. <laughs> yeah. uh, Just to cap that off, because you're, what you're talking about, uh, the industry has made a lot of progress. And I say often, the enemy of progress is complacency. Like, thank God we have Diego, and Diego's doing great things. Uh, and I love, the goal is to see Latinos on screen, because Star Wars, you're in Star Wars, you're a Latino in Star Wars, but you're not a Latino in Star Wars, because there's no Mexico Tatooine, or, you know, like, I mean, there might be, but, you know, we haven't explored that universe yet. But you, you were just you in, that goes into blind casting. Not everyone has to be a white guy, you know? Like, we can, we can, nope, no offense to white guys, but, like, it doesn't have to. We can really make stories universal, and that's, that's the ultimate goal. So thank you for bringing that up. Uh, and, and also, it's not just that they are universal, it's just that uh, sometimes what's evident is what's boring, you know? It, it is about, like, that, that's our job. The story is being told over and over and over and over. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. I just saw a Hamlet in New York that blew my mind, you know? And it's because they searched somewhere else. Mm -hmm. They went deeper, you know? So I think, again, I think uh, audiences deserve that yeah. from, from the industry also. All right, let's go to eat Dumama Dambiang. Yes. Right. That's what we're really here for. Uh, <laughs> take us back to the making of that film. What were your expectations? What, what did it feel like when it got released? Did you think that we were going to get it here? Or did you think that? No. Uh, what, what is it? What, what do you remember about it? 
I thought it was like, I thought uh, we were lucky to get uh, to be part of a project that Alfonso and uh, Lubeski and uh, Jose Antonio Garcia and all these guys that had a place in the American industry and that work working a lot in the States. Uh, they just wanted to go back home and, and breathe and feel that, get that freedom and, uh, and do a crazy trip to the beach. <laughs> and we happened to be part of that, you know? It, it, felt, it felt so special because in a way it was happening to us, but uh, I, I didn't have this, this vision at all. Uh, for me, it was great to work with these guys because I admire them a lot. They were my reference, you know? They, they were the people that I were actually doing the films they wanted to do. Um, and uh, and I was lucky enough to 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 be part of the project, but uh, it was with with uh, it was it was right after that film that I decided not to do TV anymore. You know, uh, and I think for me that was the big realization of that project. You know, that I had to stop doing TV. Uh, the TV we were doing back then in Mexico, yeah. uh, because I'm clearly back. Doors on in theaters, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, but it it, it, it was like a, it was a great a, a great decision in my life. I, w I turned 19 and I said, "This is it. This is the last show I do for TV. I'm gonna focus on theater and uh, and cinema if it happens." and uh, and I'm gonna enjoy my journey as actor, and I am gonna, uh, yeah, work less basically. But uh, the the process was was transforming in many ways. You know, I learned so much from those guys. I learned so much from Alfonso, from Carlos Cuaron. I had the opportunity also to work with my great friend, and uh, and we we found something together as a as a chemistry and a dynamic that was very helpful for both of us as, as actors, you know? And, uh, and I just had a, a, a beautiful journey that ended in Venice, in the Venice Film Festival. And we released the film and I took an airplane back home. <laughs> I remember we were in Venice and, uh, and one day someone came to us and said like, you know what guys, like actors come, but then they go. They don't stay in the festival every day. Like your movie was, Five days ago. <laughs> Tonight there's someone else here presenting a film and you're not the center of the, their party. You gotta go home. I mean, it's like what people do. And, uh, and that's it, it's over. <laughs> and we're like, okay, yeah, all right. So I flew back to Mexico and I was ready to go back into, and then I received a phone call from Alfonso saying, you guys won, you wanna come back. But that, I mean, I landed and the next morning I got the phone call. And, and that's when everything started changing, you know, because I realized there was like something for me to do, which was promote my film, something that I didn't do in the 12 films I did before, you know, I didn't even got my family to see them. <laughs> and, uh, and suddenly we went on a six month tour of promotion and, and suddenly we, we worked on, on, on the other part of what we do, which matters a, a lot too. You know, it's really important. Uh, it's really important to go out there and engage and, and ask audiences to give your film a chance and uh, stuff that in theater you don't have to do. You know, in theater it happens to you, but in film you don't just do it and throw it and, and then something happens. You have to go with the movie. And, uh, and I started meeting people and finding out I was part of a community and that there was films that I, I, I don't know, that I, I, I would be able to be part of because you, we're not alone, right? If the, the Mexican industry is very similar to many other industries, even in the States. You know, when I went to Sundance, I realized, shit, <laughs> I mean, there is like hundreds of directors here that struggle as much as a Mexican to shoot a film. And, uh, and they happen to be American, you know? And this is Hollywood too, you know? Anyway, so uh, it did change my life in many ways. I learned so much, I traveled, I started getting work out of Mexico. I started appreciating also what we were doing in Mexico. And sometimes that happens, uh, 
don't know why it happens. It's, it's sad, but we we need someone else to remind us how important uh, we we can be, or or how lucky we are to be part of a community or 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 an industry that is doing great stuff that you don't see, you know. And I I appreciate Mexico in a different way uh, as soon as I started traveling with that film, you know. What do you recall about first day on set, uh, walking on and like, I'm gonna make a movie and getting ready for what you, at that time you didn't know was gonna be your breakthrough for audiences? It was, it was, uh, I don't know, it was like getting on a mode, you know, like the Charolastra mode. And, uh, <laughs> and it wasn't just the two of us, you know, everyone would be like, Going back to being a 16-year-old, you know, uh, there was like this ongoing competition between all of us. Everything became a competition, you know, who was first on the line for lunch, uh, who, <laughs> like, like who can tease better the other, you know, they, it never stopped till someone started crying and it was, oh no, we went, <laughs> we went too far, we went too far. But it's just like, yeah, that Charolastra dynamic started started to... To, to, yeah, it's contagious, you know? Like, it's contagious. So much stuff happened there that <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk about, you know? <laughs> what happened uh, on set? Uh, season oh, kind of thing? <laughs> dramatic. I mean, it's on film, but, uh, but uh, <laughs> half of it, I mean. Uh, no, but I, I, I would tell you one thing. Like, I, the rigor I learned uh, that that acting should be about that uh, in film so much is happening that you can get distracted but uh, uh, the 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 rigor it deserves you know the 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 fortune of having all the people connected at the same time to do the exact same thing you know it's so valuable you cannot waste that up like people talk too much about what happened when we stopped you know, shooting on film and went to digital and we started like shooting and shooting nonstop. And, but, but the real waste is not, it's not the film, you know, it's, it's that energy. It's, it's unique, you know, when everyone is there for one thing and everyone gets there ready, you better be ready, you know. You cannot waste that opportunity. Uh, and, and, and for us actors, there's so much work that is on, how do you say, Intangible, Un, untouchable. Yeah, it doesn't sound. Sounds like a like an action film. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it is like it, 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 it. You cannot describe it. You know, it's about being in the right state of mind. It's about uh, not getting distracted. It's about listening to music. It's about keeping yourself uh, sane in a world that is going crazy. It's about stuff. I mean, besides the job we do and besides whatever technique you have and besides learning the lines and understanding uh, what you're doing and what's the need for you in the scene. And uh, there is another thing you have to be doing all the time, which is be completely ready, be on your best game ever, because making a film is so difficult, you know? There's, there's people that get to do one or two in their lives as, as directors, producers. It's, it can take four or five years of the life of someone to put something there for you to get to set one day and perform. So if you're not ready, like, th th there's no excuse, you know? And I learned that on Itumama Tambien, that there was no way I could waste that opportunity. But not because of a selfish perspective of my career and this is it, this is my breakthrough. It's because all these people are here doing it and, and I am not gonna be different, you know? I am, I'm, it's about being part of that. Uh, and then when, when everyone is there, things happen naturally, you know? Naturally. I. I don't know, this, this might sound, uh, th this comes out of your question, but I don't think you can or you should ever think about your career, you know, uh, the way people tell you. Uh, I think if you think about the moment and you understand why that moment matters no more than anything else, therefore you have to get the best out of that moment, you have a career. So all those times, oh, yeah. No, it's, 
every time I made a, a choice because, oh, this is good for my career, even though it's painful. Oh, this is good mm. for my career, even though I'm selling this shit. Uh, <laughs> or this is like, it didn't do anything to my career. And mm. when I did it to Mama Tambien, I was, I was getting myself ready to, to, to do Rogue One or to do Andor and work with Tony Gilroy, you know? And I wasn't thinking of that. But I was there, you know? Therefore, that flew away and got people's attention and, and delivered. You know? I'm going to take half a step back for, for a minute, right before Ito Mama Tambien. I, I speak with uh, my friends often. You're in a room full of, full of actors uh, and, and people that work in the industry and people who just want to see you also, for sure. <laughs> um, and. Uh, <laughs> Some people don't believe in luck. Some people believe that you just, you manifest it, if you want it, it happens. You, you make it happen for yourself. But I'm sure right before Eat the Mama Tambien, we all have those dreams of what we want our careers to look like or what we want for ourselves. And then there's the actual like it happened part that sometimes kind of catches, up, catches us off guard. Can you talk about that thought process before, did you ever really think you were going to quote unquote make it? Did you have that, what, what were your aspirations and dreams to work in this industry? Well, I thought I made it till I did it to Mama Tambien and I realized that was the first time I approached a film project like yeah. that. And that I, everything I did before didn't, didn't get to that level, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I realized it because others were kind enough to show me. Uh, I think luck matters. I'm not gonna say it doesn't, you know? Uh, but luck doesn't, doesn't make it, you know? Mm -hmm. Luck gives you the opportunity, but then you have to take it, right? Then you have to take it, and to take it again, you have to be ready. And that you can just blame yourself for not being ready, you know, or being ready. Uh, but yes, luck matters and, yeah. and you have to be patient. Uh, and many times the answer is around you, you know, and it's about listening. It's about, like, I, I the, the, there is this, like, this cafe that are in Mexico City, in Coyoacán, in downtown, next to, uh, it, it was called El Parnaso. I grew up walking through El Parnaso with my dad all the time, and uh, because that was our neighborhood, and it's like the plaza, and we would go and get a coffee there, and whatever, and there was the cafe next to the bookstore, you know, uh, the fantastic, beautiful bookstore, uh, and, <laughs> And my father always said when we walked there, like, look, that's the cafe full of writers not writing. <laughs> <laughs> you know? but, and, uh, we have and, that here. It's called Starbucks. <laughs> but yeah, right. I got it. I like that. These guys, these guys were better. Yeah. Eh? Yeah, they yeah, were yeah, next yeah. to a bookstore. Yeah, 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 as yeah. if they were taking care of, like, the, you know, the, 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 all, all my... All my books are there, and therefore I'm here to, <laughs> like, to watch them. You know, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but I I realize that that uh, uh, there is there is one thing you cannot lose, you know, which is the appetite to generate your own work, mm -hmm. you know. And as actors, that's why I think theater uh, is always the answer, you know, theater, theater is happening right now. If I, you know, if I get a little crazy, this becomes a theater play yeah. or you, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, it's a plot twist, <laughs> <laughs> but to do theater. Yeah. I mean, theater is, is so, so old, you know, as, a, 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 as an art form, because it's very simple. You, you know, it, have, it can happen as soon as you get people's attention and start telling them a story. You know, that's, it, that's already something happening there. Uh, with, with cinema today, we have those tools. Right today, it's it's so much easy to do to do. Point a, to a phone, by the way. People think just point at my leg. Exactly. Yeah, my leg. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't touch your leg later. I'm sure. <laughs> like I'm sure you say to Mama Tambien to get ready for these interviews. Like come it's on, it's you're going. You're, it's you're you're going to the obvious now. It's I have to get like, to character. That's what it is. Getting ready. Uh, so, 
so basically what I'm what, I, what I'm saying is yeah we can be complaining and yeah. yes obviously we have to push and we have to ask the industry and we have to uh, but we also have to have something there you know ready because there, the, the moment might come where they say okay show us and you'll be like oh you know like the, all those writers so okay let me see what you're writing yeah. well I mean, I mean it's on the process but I'm not <laughs> and you're like oh wait a second the, don't you need an opportunity? What, a, what is it that you want to talk about? You know, at least. We all knew that guy. <laughs> like everyone had it immediately. And for us <laughs> actors, there's something, you know, that comes even before that, yeah. which is the curiosity of what others are doing. Mm. We can always learn from that. And the experience of being audience makes us a better actor, you know? So how many films you see a, a week, you know? Uh, how many theater plays you go and see? How how much of, of of what's going on in that in the in the theater universe in your community you know and you're aware of? Uh, we can't lose that curiosity, you know, uh, because there there is so many actors today that say like, oh, I don't well, I don't like going to the movies, you know. And you go like, well, <laughs> oh, really? Job, man. <laughs> oh, really? That's interesting. So. For, <laughs> For me, it's yeah, it's uh, it's something you, it's something that 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 you 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 don't have to wait for, you know, and uh, because inspiration comes in weird forms, you know, you have to always be there, you have to be attending, and uh, and one day, that'll that'll trigger you to do something, uh, yeah. Anyway, so yes, luck matters, but uh, but you you shouldn't be waiting for for that to come, you know, uh, that hits you. Thank you. So let's uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna continue in this time machine. Uh, I'll be Doc. You'll be Marty. Okay. Uh, let's. We're stopping in 2002. Frida. Uh, with Salma Hayek. One of five Latinas ever to be nominated for Best Actress. We still have yet to have a winner. Just want to point that out there, and we should get one soon. Thank you very much. Uh, what do you remember about working with Julie Taymor? And Sama Hayek and Alfred Molina and that oh, that's a cast. Like if you read that cast, you go like, that was a movie. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And also a movie about a story uh, that had everything to do with my life. You know, I live in Coyoacan is the town is the, the the part of of Mexico where Frida Kahlo uh, was born and 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 her family had a house and. I live four blocks away from Diego studio, uh, that one with the bridge. Uh, so it was very personal. Very, well, my father was the set designer of the first Frida shot in Mexico in, I think, uh, the 80s. Yeah. Uh, Ophelia Medina was Frida back then. And it was a very different film. But, uh, uh, but I was, yeah, I was very close. And, and I remember uh, Julie as a... As, uh, as just the right director to do that, you know, because she is an artist in every possible way. And uh, and she just, uh, she did a film, but at the same time she did a homage to, 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 to a woman that was way ahead of her time, uh, to, to Mexico in many ways, uh, but also to, to the eye of uh, the foreign eye, uh, about Mexico, you know, which is something interesting sometimes uh, to see, you know, it, it, it's interesting to see someone come and, and, and be fascinated about stuff you're so used to, you know, and she was that person, you know, she would, she would get in love with everything she found in Mexico and with every Mexican artist. It was really interesting and, and, and really, really a beautiful, beautiful process. And, and she's a theater director, you can tell. Uh, I, I remember my, my casting session uh, as, as, as an opportunity to say, shit, if I don't get to work with her, I hope I know someone that does, you know, to hear the stories because yeah. she's, um, she was amazing. The three things she did, uh, it was like, wow, this is, this is fantastic. It's not someone saying, okay, give me your name, <laughs> one side, the other, throw the lines, thank you. You know, you're like, no, no, no. This, this one like used the space and started like playing with, the, with, with me and another, another actor. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. And uh, yeah. 
but it to mama también was out uh, already yeah. and uh, i think I, i was i i was aware of of uh, of that kind of like uh, potential that a, a Mexican story could have, you know? I wasn't surprised yeah. at all. And I was, what, I, what, I, what was impressive is to see what Salma did there, you know, because she made that project possible, you know? She made it happen. And, uh, and, and clearly she did a great job with it. Then you, uh, you take a big career swing, lending your star power to, and taking a chance on uh, two up and comers Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks mm. on, on a movie called The Terminal. So <laughs> you have to do those things. I mean, you, 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 you I mean. Uh, uh, clearly a paycheck role. You know what? What do you remember about meeting Mr. Another Steve? one. Oh, another Did, one. Can, can you imagine? Like he said, uh, when 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 he said. Uh, But he, because also he, he, this was the the most bizarre thing. I got a letter, you know, saying in the mail. Or like no, no, no. Oh, okay. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was for yeah, someone else. But would uh, do that. Like just would mail a letter. No, no, no. But it was like a, it was a note, like hey, and it was because of tu mama también. You see, it's like uh, which which I mean. He he did uh, to be honest like he he was a big fan of Alfonso's work. Yeah. They they uh, he had something to do with Little Princess. Oh, I, do you remember? I, I think I, as a producer he had something to do, or or if not he loved Little Princess, yeah. uh, which is the same. If uh, Steven yeah. Spielberg <laughs> loves your film, is like uh, I mean it is like becomes like a natural producer, you know, <laughs> just him saying to a few people I love that film. I mean it matters. Uh, uh, but anyway, yeah, it was it was uh, it was a, a, a beautiful opportunity. And the first time I was in Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles, Los Angeles. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just adapting to your surroundings, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Los Angeles, very happy, uh, enjoying my life a lot, and being able to work with a director that reminded me again that this is about what happens there, you know? I, I probably haven't seen many people have so much fun, you know, on set uh, and, uh, and, and enjoying every, every step. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, otherwise he wouldn't be doing it. O obviously he gets a lot from the experience and, and witnessing that, that it, it could be simple and fun and ludic. Ludic, is that a word? Ludico? How do you say ludico? Ludicrous. Yeah. Ludicrous. Not okay. the actor, but yes. Yeah. So like, like, yeah. Ludicrous, yeah. Yeah? Is that, yeah. does that sound right? It sounds right. Because... Sounds right to me. I can barely speak, man. I'm like, I'm useless in this. I'm terrible. Like, if, if this man had said something like awful, I would just repeat it with a smile. Yeah. And then, yeah. like, <laughs> um, just not in a Grigo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you shake that off, obviously, and then you move on to. Well, you know, move on. You, you, we see you sprinkled throughout uh, the next decade, and then you get to Gus Van Zant's Milk, with uh, Oscar-winning performance by Sean Penn, uh, with Josh Brolin, Neil Hirsch, James Franco, all these people, written by Dustin Lance Black. What do you remember about Milk? <sighs> Leche. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I remember. Uh, I think it was. Um, I remember again the the how easy Gus made everything for us, you know. Mm. Uh, first day, I was. This is the time I was living in Mexico. I was like, enough, <laughs> enough. I can be in Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing for me to be waiting for in in, in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I can be in Mexico. I I, I flew to to make an audition. Uh, I went to, you know, I said like, they said like, we'll get, we'll get in like a feedback soon, you know, said my, my agent. Uh, so I said, okay, I'm gonna wait uh, to get the feedback and then I'll decide what to do if I just fly back to Mexico straight away. So, so I went to this, one of these 
like gigantic drug stores you guys have here, which you can get lost for hours, no? <laughs> and they have some, like, yeah, it's like you buy everything and drugs, no? You get there. It's like you can buy a swimsuit, you can buy a, a barbecue. You can, so I was in one of those near, near the Grove, you know, taking time. And I, I was buying... I remember perfectly. I was buying cocoa puffs for my son because he said, like, they just don't taste the same, you know? Bring, if you go, bring them. Uh, and I was buying cocoa puffs and I got the phone call. And he was, I was so happy because I admire, I admire God so much. And, and for me, his cinema was so special. And, uh, and I got the news right away, like, you got it. No, the, the feedback was like, you got it. And I went like, wow. I, I shouted like, it was crazy. It was, I mean, I, you see many crazy people in those drugstores. So <laughs> no, one, no one seemed to react weird to, to me. But I was like fucking like jumping with cocoa puffs like, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was fantastic. It was, it was, it was great. And, and the then, worst part of that story is that your son likes Cocoa Puffs. Uh -huh. Hot take. Hot, Cocoa Puffs are gross, but go ahead. <laughs> they are. They're well, not good. They're not, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love Cocoa Puffs. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're in, the be like, in the best moments of my life. They, uh, <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> you just landed that deal, okay. man. <laughs> We're going to see you in commercials. It's going to be great. Oh, they don't have to pay me. I just. <laughs> I just did it. <laughs> it just gives <laughs> From America, though, yeah. not because it tastes different here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, like, and then I, I, and then I found myself doing a project that was so important, so so important. Like, but I, I didn't know. Like, I mean, obviously, I did my research. I mm. understood who, who the guy was, what it meant, and but then I went to San Francisco and lived mm. there for a little while and got ready. And then I started meeting people that knew my character and that that has so, 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 such a difficult, you know, uh, relation with the whole movement. And then it was like it was so intense, and and so many people came to me to talk to about why this time in history uh, define who they were and, uh, and, and their communities. And, uh, and, and I was so pleased to be part of something that matters, you know, and that can, can, be, can reach a big audience uh, with the right kind of, of, of questions and messages, you know. So then uh, you get to work with Barry Jenkins. Yeah. One of the best. I love how you just jump like 18 uh, years. Oh, yes. I mean, you could have said, like, can we, we talk about it to Mama Tambien and Barry yeah. Jenkins? <laughs> Finite number of hours here. Uh, no, 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 of course, yeah. If, if Beale Street could talk, the follow-up to Moonlight, that one best picture. Uh, Beale Street, oh, yeah, we can pop for that, fine. Um, Beale Street for me is like I, I'm I'm usually on this island by myself. I think it's even better than Moonlight. I love Moonlight. Beale Street is like my favorite film of the decade. Oh, love wow. Beale Street. And have have you talked to him about it? Yes, okay, and, okay. and he doesn't agree with me. That's fine. <laughs> um, Which but keeps him being keeps, a, a, a nice keeps person. Him, keeps him very humble. Can you imagine? He was like, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're just right. You know, it's like, yeah, absolutely, it is. <laughs> Um, but you know you're, you're you're you know you're hot on the ticket there. You're you're working with Barry Jenkins. He's coming off his his Best Picture win, and it's an important story uh, written by James Baldwin, who wrote the original uh, story. And again, this outstanding cast, uh, up and coming actors at, at, of the moment: Kiki Lane, Stefan James, won the Oscar for Regina King, Her Highness. It was great. Um, what do you remember about working with Barry? Aside from obviously that he's really full of himself, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was, um, uh, he was the, just the sweetest. I was shooting something else in, in New York, and, um, and I was uh, asked to have a meeting with him. And I went like, yes, 
of course, I'll, I'll have it right away. And I went to him and he started talking about it to Mama también. <laughs> <laughs> Insane, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and, and I said to him, like, whatever, whatever you want. And it was exactly that. It was mm. like uh, I, I then learned uh, what he wanted me to do. And uh, he was, uh, which is something I, I mean, I guess it's, 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 it's the system that screws things up, that he was some kind of, uh, somehow ashamed of offering me a little role. And I was like, I don't know, I come from a different world. Like, I, I, I don't think like having a lot of lines or being the lead of anything means anything. You know, at the end, this, this is, you can have a scene on a movie and be remembered, you know, forever, be the soul of that film. and. Besides that, it's, one thing is the film. Yeah, it's great and we can watch and share it. But what we keep is the journey, you know? What we keep is the experience, the exchange, the, 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 the learning process and the, and, the, and the beautiful opportunity we have to connect with others in the, on the journey. So I was like, if, 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 if you're offering me a role, I am going to be there because I want to see you working, you know? I'm curious to see how you approach a scene. If it lasts 30 seconds or four minutes, I'll be very happy uh, because it's, it's, it's about learning from you. You know, I, I, really, I really felt that also he had a, a very special uh, sensibility, you know, uh, and, and I wasn't wrong. When I went on set, the way he rehearsed, the way he was like l letting the scene happen, you know, he's very gentle. He's like, he, you know, he's subtle. You don't see him and suddenly he's here telling you. <laughs> and I will now relax. I mean, <laughs> I mean not, that, not that much. I mean, I, I'm exaggerating. I, I like theater, uh, you can tell. But uh, it, no, but yes, it, it's like he doesn't make a, like no, no one notices and he suddenly tells you something that changes everything and he just lets it happen again and again. And he's patient, you know, which is lovely on set because that gives actors the freedom to miss and go again with no pressure. Uh, he has that, I mean, that's why these, these actors uh, are always so good in, in, in his films, you know, because I don't think there's many people that can create a better environment for actors than, than, than Barry. Very true. Mm. I love you, Barry. All right. <laughs> um, let's, uh, we're, we talked about Rogue One at the top of this. And then we got some really good news right around that time of maybe, I don't know, 2020 really, really messed up my timeline. But uh, then we hear about Cassian Andor making a return to the Star Wars universe. And some of us said, uh, we saw the end of Rogue One. So <laughs> what happened here? But uh, he is back. I don't want to ruin, so I, I'm sure everyone's seen it here. Oh, spoiler alert. Uh, but he's back. You he's know what? I mean, I, uh, probably Disney is going to be mad with me. But if you haven't seen it, just ruin it for them. It's been, <laughs> it's been out there for yeah. such a long time. <laughs> I'm heartbroken to hear. <laughs> the internet gets really mad when you spoil things, man. This is like nah, very no, dangerous don't territory. spoil it. Don't spoil it. Because um, my, my daughter, she hasn't seen the whole thing. <laughs> She's like, damn. <laughs> um, what, well, start with, what did it feel like to get that call and say, hey, come on back. We need you for something. What meeting did you go to? Now, you should write a book about these meetings. <laughs> They're really, really good. I'm going to get sued. You know? <laughs> <laughs> For, <laughs> meetings with laptop guys and. The, uh -huh. Gareth Edwards. Uh -huh. uh, I, I, I am going to thank Gareth uh, always uh, because he. Also, he didn't, like, just to make sure you understand what happened after that, he said, because if you want to make this film, now a process has to start and we have to convince everyone else. Mm. <laughs> and then three months of casting sessions started, you know. It, this was the director saying, I want, I want you and now we have to convince everyone. So I need to know if you want to. Uh, but then I did like so many sessions, <laughs> so many. Uh, 
Anyway, um, so you were asking about the call from Andor, right? It was beautiful because it, it sounded like it, it wasn't just, it was never going to happen, you know? Uh, it, they, uh, the call was like, would you be willing to explore the possibility <laughs> of uh, telling the, the prequel story of your character on a new format that we haven't done yet and that we might be doing for this new platform that, you know, like it all sounded like, oh, how much do you want? Let me, you know, it's like, when they're selling you, this. like, <laughs> uh, but anyway, it was like, yes, of course, but because something was said that mattered to me, uh, and it's like, uh, it, it, on, the, on the, f the same, same way Rogue One came and contributed being different uh, to the saga uh, films and, and, uh, and to the universe of Star Wars till then. We think Ander can be that uh, in this new format, you know, and uh, and and also I was invited to be part of of the process from from the beginning, you know, and that 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 is all something I, I love, you know. I, I one thing I learned long ago is that uh, uh, to keep being an actor till I'm really old, I need to produce and I need to direct, you know. I need to. I, I, if one thing I don't like of, of what I do uh, in, in cinema, because in theater is different, but in cinema, is that we come in always too late, you know? Uh, and, I, and here I was invited to, to make comments and ask questions when things can actually happen, you know? If you come in on set and you question the set, you're like too late, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the, the conversation is happening here, it's like, that's it. But, uh, but here I was invited to the whole process. So I went like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I totally see this happening. Also because for me, Rogue One is a film about an event, you know? Uh, but uh, since that event matters so much, why not to see who's behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, it felt like a great opportunity. And it, in fact, if it, if it was a film, probably it wouldn't be so tempting, you know? But this format, really gives you the opportunity to talk about all those layers. And like Tony said to me, uh, we're going to make a, a, a show about how revolution starts, you know, how a revolution erupts. And, uh, and uh, I thought that was really cool. I thought that was very pertinent. I thought that was very different uh, to anything else in the universe of Star Wars. And, and for me, the the best I can do if I'm going to be part of this is to bring something different. Uh, I, I, I was also uh, when I when I saw Rogue One, I was fascinated by by the risk that the film takes, you know. And I was offered to 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 do a a project that was able to take this this same amount of risk. Uh, and that to me sounded sounded exciting, you know. Uh, and it was with Tony Gilroy, which uh, for me is, uh, I mean, very few people can say they they write, you know. Mm -hmm. And he does, like he 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 writes beautifully and com and so complex, and and uh, uh, and it was a great opportunity to to the, just to do great. A great story you know it happens to happen in the world of star wars in the universe of star wars but it's a story that matters you know uh it's a story that matters because it's about real people and and uh, people bringing change which is stories uh, that i care about you know? it's also freakishly timely right mm. now like <laughs> what everything that's going uh that that the show explores mm -hmm. and you and i were talking about this uh earlier <clears throat> and i'm a i'm a big my whole kind of platform, I talk about diversity and inclusion, but that also doesn't just include race and ethnicity. It talks about genre bias. There are too many people that think sci-fi is just like, oh, that's easy. It's like, you know, the, pretend you're flying a plane and mm. that's kind of it. Um, and this is drama, like of the highest caliber. Uh, one of the best outings of the Star Wars universe that we've seen, and it, it's, it's layered with emotion, it also isn't just like a throwaway character. Like you, he is going through many different things, feeling many different emotions, things that 
we see and don't see. Can you talk about getting into him once again, but also from a different perspective, because this is now a different version of him before we met him a few years ago in Rogue One? Well, yeah, we, we know he's capable of, of doing great stuff, of becoming part of change, of, of sacrificing everything for a cause. Then we said, like, okay, how far can we go from that? How flawless, uh, I mean, how, how many flaws, how many contradictions we can, we can show about this man that happens to, to be just one of us, and just a regular guy. That, that gets there, you know, and what needs to happen for you to get there. Uh, but but, but it, it's about how complex we can make this, you know. Uh, we find him in the worst day of his life when he has to make a choice that is going to be a mark forever, you know, and, uh, and it's very questionable. It's a, it's a show that is very ambiguous. And, uh, and to me, that is like just like beautiful material for acting you know when things are not clear when it's not about right and wrong and you know when 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 the moral standards can be questioned you know uh, it's a it, it's a character that uh, that uh, i think it's very complex uh, and because it's very difficult to read you know it's very difficult to read and it's a guy that is just surviving in a is the environment that ends up changing him and transforming him. Therefore, uh, it sends a beautiful message to me, which is like everyone can do it. You know, it's a. I always, I always say like every time I was like thinking of why is he doing this and let, let's explain, let's try to find the, the what triggers this and what triggers that. I was like, shit, characters like these never get to be the lead of anything, <laughs> you know? It's like these characters are always in the background. And yeah. here we are following one of them, you know? One, one that can be considered uh, just another guy. Uh, and to me, that's the beauty of this character, you know? As soon as it started to feel that uh, we were going into a movie moment, we would pull back, you know? And, uh, and keep him grounded, keep, keep him... Uh, yeah, real, uh, and uh, to me, one 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 thing that this character has that I connect very well with, and that I've witnessed and seen from different perspectives, very privileged ones, uh, but is this this idea of someone that is being forced to move, you know, uh, someone that is being that that has to. Uh, reinvent who he is and where, and, 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 and where he belongs to, you know, that he, he has, everything has been taken away from him uh, more than once and he's not going to stop, you know, uh, he's not going to stop to try to find a place where he belongs and a community that he belongs to. And uh, I think that is very pertinent to talk about these days because it's not just happening in the border in the south, it's not just happening in Latin America, it's not just happening in Europe and Africa, it's happening all around the world, you know. How are we dealing with this feeling of, uh, of, uh, of, of receiving or having to move, you know. And, uh, and I thought, well, this is interesting. This is interesting because there's something I can bring here, you know, and, uh, and this whole idea of, I started the conversation talking about that, you know, I had to find in theater my family. Well, this character, you end up finding out that uh, at the end of season one, uh, or, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna say. No, and it's not true. But you, you find out, you find out. What do you find out at the end of season two? No, no, in the first. <laughs> he almost did too. We saw that. In the first two, three episodes, you realize everyone is a chosen family around him. You know, the only family he he has, he's looking for in this first scene, and uh, uh, and. Uh, and that says a lot about this man, you know, and 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 the the openness and the humbleness and the love he's ready to give, you know. Uh, and I thought, like, well, that's a that's a cool character, you know, one that uh, I because I think it's a, it's it's a, it's a guy that is willing to sacrifice because he he knows how to love, uh, but he's so scared of being loved, you know, and that contradiction is beautiful uh, 
and and that's again Tony Tony's material always uh, is always about that you know when you think you you you're clear and you know what to expect from a character he says no oh oh you're liking this this man oh he's part of the empire you yeah. you, you still like him <laughs> uh, and and it's quite interesting because things are not black and white you know. Uh, that's what makes life interesting and that's what makes our jobs interesting that there's so many layers there are so many uh, details that can that can be interesting to to acknowledge you know awesome thank you uh, I have audience questions in my pocket so this is my, my last one to you uh, I wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about La Maquina uh, the limited series that's coming uh, yeah. people already, already know they're excited they're already clapping uh, exactly. And it's uh, you're producing along with Gael Garcia Bernal. I, we can only assume the meeting started with "Soy soy y tu mamá también." With both of you, <laughs> and we want you to do the same. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, that project and working with uh, someone that? I you guess know, you guys are biffles. I don't know. I don't know what to call you. You guys are like brothers. You guys are just. Yeah, That's it's crazy. Thing. It is crazy. Things like want, want the buddy comedy, like buddy cop. Uh -huh. Romp, it'll be great. <laughs> this is this is this is no, no this is not that. But, uh, <laughs> but it's close. It's close, and and there's a lot of humor involved, and it's the story of a boxer and his manager uh, at, at the end of, of of his career. I mean, the boxer's career, and uh, and it's about friendship, and it's about love, and it's about. Mm, yeah, it's about fame and uh, and the sickness around uh, around popularity. Uh, it's uh, it's interesting. It's fun and it, and it's us back uh, acting together. Uh, it it's been a while since since we did it last time in Rudy Cursi, so it's uh, it's 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 so beautiful to just to get there and it's like the the energy, the chemistry is there. And, and we have so much to lend to these characters that uh, that uh, it becomes it, it becomes an addiction. You know, it's like you don't want to st stop acting; it's dangerous. <laughs> uh, but I, I am very very pleased uh, that that we got ourselves to do this uh, before it's too late. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're looking. No, but we're, it's a boxer. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't being dramatic. Like, <laughs> no, it's just like. <laughs> I can be playing a boxer for a long time. I, mean, <laughs> I can be, I can be the manager for yeah. a long time. But, uh. Uh, okay. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna read. I have some questions from people in the audience. When I say your name, I just want you to like to scream, just so we know it's you. So uh, scream. scream or raise your hand, whatever you feel like doing. Uh, from Erica Hayden. Oh, that's right. Oh, right up front. That was Erica. You, that was you, you've been <laughs> here the whole time. <laughs> Holy crap. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. My, my God. <laughs> Guys are acquainted, I see. Uh, will you share a little bit of your method or process for creating a backstory or prepping for a new character? Have there been any significant changes to your process over the years? Yes, definitely. Uh, first of all, I, I would say each project deserves a different approach from me. Uh, I learned that from a... a theater director I worked with when I was 20 something and uh, we arri I arrived with my book and he was so analyzed and ready and, and he walked through the you know the table and took all our books and put one in front and it had a white page on top and he said that's the way I want to start with a white page look at it think about what's there and let's start and I was like, holy crap, <laughs> <Wait, laughs> what about my book? And he's like, oh, I have a few notes there that I might need. And, and then he said, no, no, please. Like, it's about what happens from now on, you know, forget everything else. Uh, then there's other projects where if you, don't, if, if you don't know exactly what you're doing the day you get there, there's no time. Uh, so I, I also think each character deserves a different approach, you know, with with someone like Cassian Andor or uh, or the, the character Jack Lita in, in Milk. Uh, 
those are historical films. I mean, Cassian doesn't exist, but uh, but it does exist in terms of like there's something to go and research, uh, and uh, and there's a reference, a, a real one that you have to pay attention to, and it's a very different approach. With Jack, uh, I remember doing a lot of interviews and finding out what. You know, what, what was the first impression he would leave? And then that, that would tell me a lot about who the character was. And then there's always a moment where I go to find my own reference, the ones that are personal and push it. The ones that are... <laughs> <laughs> it's the internet, man. You yeah, it's like... You want. <laughs> <laughs> Is this live somewhere? <laughs> oh, live. No, it's oh. not live. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I mean, I Someone will so. edit it. No. Is, right? no, I want the curses included. Uh -huh, the it's, curses. Important. it's important. <laughs> Someone should dub it. Like in a... In a <laughs> You're like, eh, no. In a, in a good accent. Uh, you know, you know, yeah, how, that, they don't say that anymore. Like, can you clean your accent? Is, is, is there a way to clean your accent? Or to neutralize your accent? You know? Neutralize. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? That sounds like ex, you know, like so well, the, uh, men in black. You know, it's like, what are you going to do to my accent? No. <laughs> Uh, I, th I think you answered this one. Uh, so, sorry, uh, yeah. Well, sorry. Uh, no, that was. Uh, oh, no. But anyway, like, there's a moment where then I, I have to go to 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 my personal story, and uh, I don't believe in in in, in masks or like. In, I think at the end, em emotion should come from the right place, and it should be unique, uh, and it should happen. And, uh, and and I think acting is a lot learning to get in and out of that. You know, uh, but it's about that connection, and uh, so it doesn't matter how much information you you bring in, then you have to go to the basic story, and it's, normally it has to do with my dad or the absence of my mom, basically. Thank you for sharing. Uh, you touched on this a uh, bit earlier, uh, Jaden Alvarez. Yes. Ah, there you go. How uh, are you? Very good. <laughs> the question's here, man. <laughs> uh, how has the industry changed for child slash young actors since your time as a child slash young actor? Uh, not enough, to be honest. It hasn't changed as uh, as I would hope to. Uh, I had a lot. I did a lot of jobs as a kid because they could treat me as an adult. Uh, you know, because I I had some kind of experience that other kids didn't have. But uh, I, di I directed a film with a young kid and, uh, and I was very, like, intentionally, I was just making sure the experience was right for that kid, you know? And what you get out of that is magical, you know? For me, it was like uh, every day he had to be asked if he wanted to come to set. And if he didn't, I had to find out something else to do, you know? And that was my... And, and I, I, I didn't experience that. And uh, sadly, because of, 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 of how production sometimes is just thinking about it, it's so egocentric, you know, it's all about getting it, getting it, getting it. We forget about the experience, the journey, and, and, and the experience of young actors, of kid actors, uh, uh, child actors, or however you want to call it. Uh, it's more important than, than ours, right? I mean, it's, it's different. Uh, they're giving you something unique, something that has no value, you know? Like, because when it's happening to a kid, it's, it, it is happening. And the, 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 what it opens, what that look opens, is just, it can be beaten, you know? Uh, so anyway, yeah, I, I think there's, there's, there's places where they're much better at it than others. Uh, but the big mistake is to 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 think that uh, from my perspective that that a young child can can make a choice of being or not an actor you know uh, i don't think you have the tools to do that uh, therefore you shouldn't be asked to be a professional actor till you can make that choice um Ketra? 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 Yeah. Ketra? Yeah. Hey, how are you? I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> me too, me too. What are you doing? She's like, I, I want to go home. <laughs> what do you do with that? I They're was forced to come. Yeah, I was forced to go. <laughs> I'm glad it's about to be over. Uh, at this point in your career, do you feel more creatively drawn to acting or more behind the camera roles, such as producing, 
et cetera. And I'm just gonna add to the et cetera. When are you gonna direct again, man? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I am, I, I think I now understand uh, that you, you don't have to make a choice. The only choice I, I, I can make today, because I might change my mind later, but uh, is that I, if I get to act, I'll much rather have someone else directing, uh, that I wouldn't like lose the opportunity of being guided by someone. Uh, and, and same thing, if, if I'm directing, why would I like myself to be in front of the camera? I'm the only person that cannot impress me. You know, that cannot, <laughs> I'm not gonna come out of something I didn't see coming, right? It's like, <laughs> therefore, why put myself in front of the camera and then go to the monitors <laughs> and go like, oh my God! <laughs> that was like, that, I wasn't expecting that to happen, you know? And I know a few directors, actors that do that. They go to the monitors, they go like, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good, that's good. They're like, you just did it. Me. It's me, I'm here. <laughs> no, but it's, I mean, I understand sometimes it has to happen. No, it doesn't have to happen, but sometimes people think it has to happen, but I, I wouldn't put myself there. Uh, but I, I say every, everything complements each other, you know, it's, um, I, I started directing and producing because I was so curious and I so wanted to tell my own story. You know, the, the first film I directed was uh, about becoming a father. And I think that it means a lot. It's like, as soon as I, 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 I had kids, I realized I, I, I wanted also to tell my story. And I wanted to be the best tool I can to help others tell theirs, you know? Therefore, I had to tell mine, because when you start directing from the position of, a, of the actor, oh, that's dangerous, you know? And, uh, and this industry tends to push you there, you know? When you, when you start to try to, to, yeah, control things from, from the seat of the actor, uh, it's wrong, you know? So directing allows me to be a much better actor. Uh, from Johnny Rosales. Hey. <laughs> uh, we are not seeing much progress in Latino representation in Hollywood. That that's not a question. Oh, I just want to <laughs> want everyone to feel that because that is one hundred percent true. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny, for that. How should a Latino actor keep from feeling disheartened or angry mm. by that lack of representation? Great question. Yes. We solve all problems right now, please. <laughs> well, is it, no, no, I, I, just, I just think, I just think uh, that, uh, like, uh, anger can be uh, a, a, a very strong uh, creative energy, you know? Tons of things have happened uh, uh, that are full of, 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 of that energy and that power, you know? The, uh, if we talk about art, you know? post-war art, I mean, it's, it's always like, oh, so strong, you know? And, uh, and uh, what I would say is like, yeah, you should be doing about it, uh, something about it, you know? And, and doing something about it means uh, finding other ways. Uh, I, 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 I think that uh, sometimes if you can talk to a very small audience, but that can change the perspective of someone is so much important than be that the industry, you know, reacting or that the numbers of like how many screens in each cinema are telling stories that have something to do with Latinos. When we start analyzing it that way, as, as yeah, again, as an industry, uh, is dangerous. It's dangerous because we lose our voices. Uh, I think. I think. Yeah. To, Looking at each other's eyes and, and and making sure that matters is already something, you know. Uh, for me, I don't know. I've done so many Q and A's, but Q and A's with actors is something special because because I know these words mean something different. No, and I've been in many of these sitting there, and uh, and 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 they've been important in my life. Uh, even though this is a tiny room, you know, and we're not in a thousand people seat. So what I mean is like, yeah, let's not, let's, let, let's try another way to get there, you know. Uh, 
I think I, I, I think from from that anger you you might be able to do amazing stuff that that this industry doesn't know you're capable of, and uh, and the day you show them, um, I I think you have a better chance that they'll react. I did, that, that was, I, I I didn't solve any problems. I mean, you also said it wasn't special having a Q&A with me, but okay, thanks. This has been very special, but I've talked to Barry Jenkins, and he's, <laughs> he said to yeah. me to be careful. Yeah, I just, And just to add to that real quick, just because oh, it's always important just to say out loud, Latinos are 40% of the box office, 20% of the U.S. population, but we're less than 5% in movies, so feel free to make those more even. Thanks. That, that was a great uh, question. And last one's from Caroline. Caroline? Oh, well, these, everyone sat up front. They, they knew. Uh, hi. She says hi. Hi. Hi, Caroline. Hi. How did you find your representation in USA? Which advice would you give to an actor coming from a different country? Thank you. Exclamation point. Uh, um, and also, I mean, I've, I've been seeing all the notes. Not that I'm making a comment on the others, but you have the best writing. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, it's, it's great handwriting. I mean, I'm not lying. Uh, okay. Um, find your representation. Oh, you mean my, like, my actual agent? Ah, I was like, how do you find your representation? <laughs> you know that? It's just every time that word comes, it's like, oh, I have to, I, I have to be very careful of what I'm going to say. This, is, this might be an, an opportunity to say the right thing or just to fuck it up. And, uh, but you're talking about actual representation. Uh, well, I'll t I'm going to tell you a story uh, again because it's yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, no, I love do we have time to yeah. just a quick one? Uh, no one's leaving. Uh, in the middle of this. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it's just that uh, they they say like w the 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 person I work with and uh, that is a, a beautiful friend and uh, that I've worked with for most of my life is uh, Elise Schurz, which is, uh, uh, she represents uh, Gael too, and, uh, and uh, Javier Bardem. Um, and, uh, and when I was starting, someone said to me like, oh, you cannot have the same representation as Gael, then that's not gonna work, and there's gonna be jealousy and shit, and that's not gonna end terrible, and no, 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 you need to isolate and get your, and I, I, I listened. I listen. Uh, I, I listen, and it was just like I just lost the two years or three years of my life. Till I went to Elise and said, "Like, oh, this is not working." And I started working with her. And what I'm trying to say is that no one can tell you what's right or wrong in this journey of yours, you know, because it everything is it's so much about you, and where do you feel comfortable? Where you are stronger? Where you are uh, uh, so. Your representation can be a, in a big agency, or uh, or it can be sleeping with you, you know. And uh, <laughs> which I don't know. <laughs> now that I think about it, <laughs> no, I mean it might that might ruin your relation. <laughs> but we're talking about representation, no? <laughs> you can you you can get another boyfriend or whatever or girlfriend or whatever you like, but. Uh, um, <laughs> no, but it's true. It's true, like, th this idea of, like, you suddenly get to the big agency and no one pays attention or things don't work out. Uh, and then, again, your, your job is, you get a job because you, you happen to talk to someone that wants to tell a story and suddenly thinks about you. So don't push or, or don't be expecting something that has happened to others to happen to you. Mm. Uh, you know, it's like, because you, you might get there and find out you didn't need that. That's what I mean. Uh, 
you, 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 you'll find your way and you have to see what your possibilities are and, and, uh, and take what feels the best and make sure you can always change your mind also, you know, and, uh, and adjust and, and react and change your mind and, and, and reinvent yourself over and over and over. It's a, it's a non-stop thing, you know. Uh, you can always hit a wall, no matter who you are and like, you know, how good you've done. And, uh, and this, this beautiful work give us, gives us the opportunity to reimagine ourselves over and over because we change. We change and we, the, the characters I'll be able to play in 10 years, I can't even think of them today. And I would never be able to, well, <laughs> I was going <laughs> to, I'm playing Cassian, which is like a 10 year old character and I'm playing him before. This might be. Uh, well, you're aging backwards anyway, so it's like. <laughs> exactly, yeah. that's true. But wh what I mean. Is... <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. You look the same as you did it in Eat the Mama Dambian. It's like the same person. <laughs> just longer hair. It's just know? that some, sometimes they tell you so much stuff. Yeah. You know, like in, in, in the, the, the lessons, the acting lessons, you know, I see I see so much, so many people like putting their stuff like here, you're going to learn this and that. And what happens to you when this happens and when that happens and we're going to show you and you go like, who, who can have all this information? Yeah. You know, first of all, how do you get that information? Like and, and how does that translate into changing your life? No. It's 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 more simple. It's yeah. about what you feel. I mean, and and and, and believing in in, in that impulse. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we need the Diego Luna show, man. It's gonna be so good. <laughs> He's your own let, talk let me... show. I, I saw it right now. It came like. In a vision, I was like, but he wouldn't be able to air. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would <laughs> not on broadcast, but he'd definitely go on like cable. Um, I, w I want to, um, I want to say something, and because you're too humble to admit this, so I'm just going to say this. Um, what Diego Luna brings to Andor is one of the best performances of the year uh, on television, like point blank. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And hopefully deserves the proper recognition uh, of this year's Emmys. And why I want to point that out in particular, there have been 75 uh, Emmy ceremonies in history. Uh, 75 lead actor drama uh, winners of that time and a lot of nominees during that time. And one Latino has been nominated in that category in 75 years. One, Jimmy Smiths. And I would just like to point out, number two is right here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a meeting out there. Talk about the mama tambien again. And um, I would like to thank all of you for coming. But one more time, ladies and gentlemen, Diego uh. Luna. <laughs>